emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello, gang. Colin here, Fester 67's workshop, and welcome to part four of the eModels build up of the Suzuki XR GSXRR 2020. And we're going to be doing the engine swing arm, the wheels, and the front end assembly, folks. So, we've got the engine here that I've been fettling around with and doing a little bit of brush painting on some certain detail parts. As per the instructions there, I've just been round and painted some of the hoses, the oil filter and bits and bobs like that. All the call outs for this are in the instructions of the kit and the paints uh, that I've been using are all listed in there as well folks. All of which have been kindly supplied by the guys at eModels. So pop over and have a look at eModels.co.uk you can grab one of these kits to build along with me. The link is in the description. And you too can be joining Festa. And look at this. Got a nice gold air box about to go on. So we'll just put a little dab of extra fin in there. And start the process of getting that glued in place. And we painted these all up in the last episode, folks. So, yeah. All dried off rather nicely. I've left it a good few days. Normally I leave it a week for everything to dry and I keep everything in different uh, uh, sealable tubs just to stop the dust and detritus. And when I've been using the lacquers I have a little fan on the side that I just run off a battery and it basically vents all the air out of the box, lets everything gas off nicely. So we've got that all glued in so we'll just put that at the back there and let that settle down. And we'll have a, a looky loo at what bits and bobs we can get on the bike. So I'll just drop me frame off me jig, get that out of the way. And we'll have the engine and that ready to go in the frame, which just tucks up underneath like so. All the screws are in the relevant areas of the instructions. So when you grab your screws, you can lay them on the instructions and you'll see that you've got the right right size screw and then obviously this screwdriver is a bit magnetic so you can then just pop your screws in to start mounting your engine like so just give that a twist try not to scratch your frame it does happen and we've just been round and put the other screws in there as well and then that should be the engine pretty much in the frame and it just makes it easier to handle now because like you say your engine's nicely protected clutches on looking rather splendid and i must admit i do like the detail in this kit it really is beautifully done a slight wobble on there so i'll just give that a little additional dab and then i'll try and uh, let that go off a bit more like that yeah the temptation to do brum brum noises at this stage is really high but I'm having to resist folks I'm trying to be good so I'll just pop that on now just hang that off of the jig whilst that dries and it just keep it safe for me like that that's all it needs not too fussed about getting it in the exact right position. I just want it to dry out without me knocking it because, yeah, I can be a little bit clumsy. That's looking rather splendid now, so I'm happy with that. So we can get on and do a bit on the swing arm here. We've got the chain going through in a moment as well, but for the moment I can put the suspension spring in, start putting that in place. And I'll put it in just snug so that if I need to move it about, I can do. I can always tighten everything up later on in the build, folks. But at this stage, I'm just nipping it up just so that it stays in position a little bit whilst I then drop this up into the frame. Like that. Look at that. Springy, springy. Yeah. 
nice little bit of a carbon decal going on which will get matted down later on so we got the chain on looking rather nicely and I've been round and I've just brush painted some of the detail in there and put a little wash in there just so that it gives it a little bit of a uh, depth and I'll just put a spot of glue just in there where I had to just pop the mug guard slightly the hugger so that I could pop the chain through I've got a nice bit of rag down because I want to put some uh, decals on the fender and it just stops me from putting it down on the bench there might be something on the bench and it could scratch it so we don't want to do that so I'll just put these on each side and then I can try and line them up mirror them up a little bit and try and get them reasonably aligned we said hoping <laughs> yeah it's just really coming along nicely this kit I've thoroughly enjoyed it really has been a, a beautiful little build and it's an iconic machine I do say it's the the most beautiful bike on the grid and yes yeah, Suzuki are now pulling out of the Moto GP championship at the end of 2022 and I think that's a tragedy I really do because these are beautiful bikes but I think they've fallen on hard times a little bit and you know it costs a lot of money to run the Moto GP teams and yeah I for one am sad to see them go but we just line these decals up as best we can just to try to get them looking almost mirrored on each side try and get the angles correct we can then let them dry off we then got another decal that goes right underneath the belly pan of the bike which is just above my left hand there so we'll let that soak up and then we'll bring the belly pan over and we'll put a little bit of ultimate normal uh, strength solution on there uh, again this set of three solutions is really top quality I must admit uh, normal strong and extra strong available from the guys at eModels and they are really really are a good product so you can't go wrong grabbing yourself a set of them folks especially with your bikes and your cars when you're trying to get decals to conform you can't go wrong with them so we just put that over there on the stand out of the way just gently rest that in just so that I don't knock it because I want them decals to cure whilst I do the belly band like that like easy isn't it so we'll get them decals on and that should then have the belly pan finished because once these have all dried off I can then put the clear coat on top of this and get the bike all nice and shiny so we'll smooth them off of there let it do its thing not quite ready it's beginning to go so look at that yeah it will go there you go and we'll just lay that down underneath like so just like that beautiful yeah and it's just one of those just this stage when you're doing your bike builds when the bike starts to come alive and it really is quite satisfying when you've done your paint you sit there and you think yeah okay and then you put the decals down and the bike just jumps out uh, and gives you a slap round the chops and uh, yeah starts taking shape folks so I'll just line that up I've got the D instructions just to me left so that I can see that I'm lining them up okay and then I can put that to one side and let that dry right. what are we gonna do next folks mm -hmm. might have to do some wheels I think we'll see right 
fresh bit of water there let that warm up and then we can do the wheels so I'll just put me little uh, plasticine on the end of this and I use one of these little holders and I printed this little adapter to go on the end with a ball of white tack in it it comes in handy when I'm doing my wheels I'll just press the wheel in there like so and it just just lets me grip it a little bit better like that and then it it will fall over <laughs> and then we can start putting some of these decals around the wheel rim start letting them take shape and we've got the tire decals to do as well folks so we'll be doing them at some point uh, just have a look at the instructions to make sure I've got the wheel round the right way and I'm putting the right ones on just give that a larrapin there you go let me put a bit of decal solution on there and start laying these on so I tend to do one side of the wheel at a time and then I'll let it dry off and then I'll come back and do the following side the following day so I'll time lapse that out but it'll give you an idea of how these go on folks decals just going off on the right hand side there letting it soak so yeah nice to me a kit this one I must admit the uh, 112 Suzuki Few, few of you are building along with me a few of you have been in touch and said that you're enjoying the series which is nice thank you massively for the feedback really do appreciate it and I look forward to seeing your builds again you can put them on the eModels Facebook page I'm sure they'll be glad to see what you've been doing there you go and then we can start moving this around on the wheel rim to get it roughly where I want it and they are prone to pinging off at any time these ones folks so I've got a gloss coat on the wheel rim and then I just tease it into place by whatever means necessary it will conform so yeah once you've actually got it reasonably where you want I tend to give it a quick a quick little brush and let the decal solution do the work because by then you can get the other two on and you can then start spacing them out where they should be we can just nudge that along like that and then just turn the wheel slightly and get ready to put the next one in like that and then just try try to get it as in place as you can so that when you put the third one in try not to pull the first one off of your thumb there come <laughs> so I mean yeah, I make the mistakes so that you don't have to <laughs> there you go see a lot of folks would edit that out but now I leave me mistakes in so that you can see that I'm just as human as the rest of you there you go just lay that on like so there you go concentration folks <laughs> it's only because I don't want them to fly straight back off because I, I will throw me teddy bears across the room see and yeah so we'll just give that a little proprietary nudge with a bit with a scalpel blade like that and then we'll be out there and give it a spin and put the last one on there oh mm. nice in it nice color contrast the black with the green there looks really nice i do like that and then just drop that one in and then we can start placing that now and then just bring it round trying to get a reasonable distance between the three of them as near as damn it as I can get it just 
drag that over and then just caress that down like so take your time at the end of the day just take your time folks with these and you'll see when you look at the instructions you can just move them around and get them roughly where the instructions show you bear in mind the tyre valve as well use that as a, a good um, way of lining things up for your first decal see where the valve is on the wheel and then put your decal as near as damn it as it shows in the instructions and the rest will fall perfectly in place like so just beginning to get there just needs to come around a frack as more and then bring that one around just a tad like that there you go I'll make it look easy but honestly I'm sitting here so nervous <laughs> because yeah it's just as you finish that you go to move it you drop it and all three decals will ping off on on the tea towel there which you don't want to happen so we're just letting it do its thing and already the decal solutions drying them out so yeah they'll conform and the beauty of it is as well is once they've started to adhere you can then go round with your stronger solutions just to give them a kick start and get them into place and you do find sometimes they will try to almost like a rope bridge they try to hang down over the wheel rim there so you just give them a little prod back into place and the decal will start to conform you just bring it around so that you can get rid of the, the tightness there it's just because I'm moving them around just to try to get the gaps a bit closer. Like that. And I'm getting there. I'm just fussing a little bit just, just to get some of them edges a bit closer to the tyre. Like that. So we'll put that there and let that uh, go off for a little bit. I mean, it's the same process on the other three sides of the wheels folks same with the front wheel both sides and i've got the other side of this to do and uh, just brush any bubbles out as you can like that and it'll go down quite nicely now yeah really happy with them so we'll just put the brush back in there Put that to one side and move on. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. So we'll grab the next part. And see what we can achieve with that. So, wheels are drying in the background as you can see. So we'll get the old airy stick out and see what we can do with this engine on frame folks I think we can do a little bit of detail brushing so I've got me different pots of Tamiya here and I'm just going to go around touching up any little bits and pieces and adding details like bolt heads and things like that folks and I tend to, uh, these are all thinned these uh, pots and I just go around and I then highlight any of the detail bits that I need to just get to pop out and this is a nice relaxing evening spent doing this just picking out all the little details and just work your way around systematically getting everything where it should be and I'm doing all the, the copper and the brass bits and bobs the brake reservoirs and things like that and you can just go around and bring them out touch them up and just start doing that little bit of detailing folks nice way to spend a relaxing evening 
just picking out the detail and I tend to use the lid there as a little ink well nicely thinned uh, paint in there and I can just quickly flick it in there and it's highlighting the detail just as I like like that so we've been and done some bits and pieces on that piece let's have a look at the instructions just to see what other bits need picking out on that I've been round and done the clutch bolts as well done the hose clips all the housings are done done the chrome bolts on the side of the engine I think we've got some detail bits just to add to the swing arm and the chain if I remember right let's quickly check what we got there let's put that to one side we got a couple of bits to put in there where the adjustment is for the rear wheel just highlight that darken that out so it makes it stand out and it's all the little bits and pieces in all, all these tiny little pieces now I could mask them off and do them with the airbrush but I do like going in and just brush painting these little bits and it's as you can see beginning to take shape got the brake hose on there looking rather splendid so I think I think the swing arm will be a pretty ready to go in so I think we we can go for a bit of a marriage on the bike and the swing arm in a minute yeah put the rear brake in and then uh, I think we'll go for it so we'll just orientate that and have a look just a quick dry fit see how things go together got the sprocket lined up I think we'll go for a, a marriage why not and get this in the spring for the suspension just slots in that little gap there where the bracket is at the top of the frame and then you've got a nice long screw then that will go in and join that up and then you'll also have a couple of brackets that join the lower part of the suspension arm so refer to your instructions line all your screws up ready and you can uh, go for a bit of a test fit so I think we're ready to have a fit that can go on that's the sprocket cover that can sit in there like that and I think we can get ready to assemble this bad boy so let's have a look a little bit of extra fin on there just to get them legs of that bracket to stick like so and then we can get the screws why not more than happy with that so I think we can go for a bit of joinage because it's rude not to isn't it well, let's just find the right screws and I lay the uh, screw on the instructions just to make sure I've got the right one like that just to keep that going so we'll just test to make sure I'm getting the right one and then we can join that up like so like I say once you get the first couple of screws in everything just pops into place then folks so take your time check and double check and then you can then go round and tighten everything up as you need to look at that whoa I've done that look nice hey okay. oh beautiful machine really is any of you out there that appreciate motorcycles will really love this build it is absolutely a work of art the da vinci of the motorcycle world i reckon yeah love it yeah really have really have got in, got impressed with that right bit of the old tweezer ridge just to get the uh hose on the back of there 
there's a tiny little uh, lug that sticks out that you can put this pipe on just engage it in there and it will go I tend to put a dab of extra fin on the, on the lug and then the pipe will just pop straight in so that just grab the other tweezers and get that in which it is now in and yeah that can sit quite nicely then ready for the rear wheel to go in I think let's have a look I think we'll uh, have a look and uh, get these decals just to conform a bit more a bit of a strong on these just to get them to go in because you've got a slight transparent edge that's just poking out slightly proud of the wheel rim and I want to get that to slot down so just going round now that they've dried on the wheel a bit better I can go in a bit heavier with a brush and get them to conform might as well do it at this stage because the rear wheel will be going on at some point in this episode. So we'll do that. Grab the front wheel, I think. Have a quick check on that. And get the same on them. Just that leading edge there that sits slightly flush, slightly proud even. You just get that to drop down. So that when you clear over it, it, it beds down nicely. Like that. Just creep round there like so. There you go. Put the brush over there for a minute. Pop the lid on. Just don't want to knock anything. We'll put a little bit of the uh, grey primer on these clear wheels give them a coat and then they'll be getting ready to paint I will tend to paint these on the sprue and then when I cut them off I've only got a tiny little bit of rubber black then just to put in place so do them at this stage put them on a clip like that and then do the other two and then uh, I can get them on the paddock stand then and then that will make it easier to stand the kit up later on so I'll do the other side nice even coat and then that will dry off and we can move on to the next stage folks it's all these little detail bits are perfect to do later at night like that nice coat getting all the little nooks and crannies like that then we'll keep that off to the side and that can then dry whilst we're doing other bits and pieces like this exhaust I know I know folks so we're going to mask up the exhaust so that we can uh, do a bit of bluing and that on it and it's a similar process to what I did on the CBR uh, fire blade that I built for the guys at eModels and I like to uh, just go through mask off these so that the welds are left exposed now the scalpel I use has got two blades in it so you can actually cut the tape even thinner if you need to so bear that in mind but on the Suzuki there's quite quite a few thicker welds as well in a few places so I've got a different stack of uh, tape thicknesses here that I can have a play with and then I'll see which ones I like if I think they're too too fat I can always go back and put thinner masking on if I need to. So we'll just get that to conform. And then when we've blued this, we can then peel off the tape and it'll leave nice little shiny TIG welds all around that exhaust. And it will look quite nice. I'm not going to go too mad on the exhaust bluing on this one 
just subtle. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. Fester's doing subtle. Grab a little bit more tape. And start doing the next one. Now, sometimes the tape can start coming back away. So just keep going round and conforming it in place as you need to, peeps. Now, don't give up on it. It will, it will conform. And you can use the back of your blade to get it in any of the recesses. And then I tend to go around with a, a tapered nail tee. And it will then give it a bit of a, a press down. Get it to take shape. So we'll carry on and get all the welds done on this bad boy. And masked off. And there you go. As you can see, loads and loads of different welds all done on there. So we slap the tape out of the way. And we can move on and do some tyre decals now. Get these on now. I've put a very, very thin gloss coat around the inner edge of the tyre. So I can lay these on to a gloss coat. And then I wet these down. And these are like the rub-off transfers for the tyres, the Michelin. And I line, line them up onto the gloss coat. And then I will just use ordinary decal water and start wetting the paper like so. And these have like a, a piece of paper each side that you peel off before you do this, folks. And you end up with like a thin bit of tissue paper. It's the best way of describing it. See, And then just spin the wheel round and do the next one. And you want it just to stick to the gloss coat. Get it in place to where you want it. Just check with the other side. And then go back in and start wetting the tissue paper. Don't brush too hard. Let the water do the work. And just keep brushing at it. And then eventually the paper becomes really transparent. And the tent dab down on it like I'm doing there. And then once that tissue paper gets nice and transparent, you can then peel it off. But do it nice and slowly. And then that way it shouldn't pull the tyre decal back off then, folks. Like that. There you go. And I know James was interested in uh, doing doing these type of decals for his formula one cars so if you are watching this james that's how you do it mate and then just go back over with your water and brush it down and it's worth checking before you peel it off to make sure that the decal is actually adhering they can come away so just be wary of that folks and then just go back over and give it a little little brush like so and then once that's all dried I then go back round and I matte coat over the edge that had the gloss coat and it just mats it all back down folks so we're gonna do a little bit of yellowing on the forks there so I'll just give that a quick spray over the uh, silver and that will get the yellow effect that I'm after on the forks there. Right, we've got the disc brake on, simple glue job, and then we can pop the rear wheels in, like so. This is all dried off for a couple of days, this wheel, so the decals won't come off. And then I'll just put the screw in, nice and snug, like that. There's the exhausts. Now I went over these the same as I did with the CBR with the reds and, and the blues and then quickly gave it a dust in with a to me uh, weathering set just to pick out any other little details that I wanted to. And it's given me, I think, quite a nice subtle exhaust system now. Just what I was after. 
many, many ways of doing this. You know, there's a million ways to do these exhausts. But that's that's how I wanted mine to look, just nice and subtle. Now I can go in with a detailed brush and just pick out any little bits and pieces that need to be picked out. And then I shall mist over the exhaust with a semi-gloss varnish. Just to seal in all the powder and everything, so yeah. Just put a little bit more detail on this and I think this exhaust is going to be pretty close to going on the bike hey folks nice bit of progress today so we'll just pick that out try not to twitch I do apologize and then we can just come round that edge just press on me finger to stop me twitching and then we get our brush like that there you go all in all i'm pretty pleased with that yeah nice bit of heat stain in there folks again you can go as light or as dark as you want with your heat stain and it's entirely down to you it's personal choice uh, there's good reference photos online and with the instructions that come with this bike so have a look see what you fancy so we'll let that all go off we'll give that a semi-gloss varnish and then we'll fit that to the bike i think why not so just have a quick quick clear out of my brush before i forget yeah, don't want to don't want to let me paint go off on my paintbrush put that away and then we can come back and carry on the build right what's next quick peek at the instructions i think we can grab the engine frame assembly and just just look at putting this on i think oh yeah so again put the exhaust headers into the cylinder head there and then line the exhaust up and it will pop straight up underneath the frame like so and just press them in place like that and that does sit rather sexily doesn't it look at that Whoa. Hey. really 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 like that we've got the radiator to go on and that just clicks in place on the frame there's a couple of little lugs each side and then once I've got it where I want it to and the support bracket and the hose on, I'll then go round and give it a, a dab with some extra fin so that it stays in place. So I'll just click that on like so and then line that bracket up. It's such a shame that it goes over the exhausts and covers them, but hey-ho, we know it's there. We know it's been weathered get me tweezers and I can just ping that bracket into its locating lug on the front of the frame there just where my left thumb is like that and that just gives that a nice bit of support and then we just pop that little hose in the back there and then we can give that a dab of extra fin to lock that all in so we'll have a dab just there like so and on that I, uh, pipe that goes to the engine and then a tiny little dab where that joins the frame each side come around there and do that pipe and a tiny little dab just there like that and then that will all set now just give it a tiny press just to make sure there you go folks that's the radiator on that's the paddock stand it just sits up underneath the swing arm there on a couple of lugs so we can start leaving the bike they'll probably be able to move the jig out of the way in a minute so yeah look at that right what we got we got some hoses let's get them on 
That's the beauty of these instructions, folks. You've got the, the hose length on the instruction there. Lay it on there. Get your nippers and cut it. We can start putting some hoses on here, I think. And they're all uh, letters. So that when, later on, when you join the hoses up onto the handlebars, you just match the corresponding hose letter. And you'll be able to put them all in the correct place, folks. So this one comes all the way through. Comes around the side there like so. A little dab of extra fin. And then we'll pop that onto its locating peg. Like so. And then we start assembling the triple trees. And getting these front forks ready. Really surprised how, how far we're getting on this episode. Pleasantly pleased, folks. So if you are building along with yours, I hope, you, hope you're enjoying it. Again, folks, if you want to grab one of these kits, head over to emodels.co.uk. Slap one in your basket and grab it. I've got probably one, maybe two more episodes of this series to go. So you should be able to catch up by then. And we can just start now assembling these front forks and getting ready to put the front. I think we'll be able to get the front end assembly on this by the end of the episode. What do you reckon? Might as well. We'll go for it. So we just get that in place like so. We've got some front brackets to go on there to close them off. And we'll have the top yoke going on to give that a bit of support. So we might as well go for it, I think. Now on the real bike, these forks are carbon fibre. Yeah, carbon fibre forks. Our technology's changed. Right. So let's get the front wheel. Check the instructions. Make sure we're giving it a right way round. Just make sure. And then this can go on. We've got a screw that goes through the front of this to hold this in place. So we'll get this bad boy on, I reckon. Why not? And I tend to just roll the wheel in from the back there. He says dropping it. Why not? And then we can pop the screw through, get that in place. Just trying to get it, chase it round the cutting mat. <laughs> oh, bless it. It's early hours of the morning, folks, for Festa. So, yeah. So, let's just grab that, pop that in there, like so. There you go. Resistance is futile, folks. Right. What have we got? Get the screwdriver out in a sec. Just want to make sure I've got the right screw. Right. Other way around, Carl. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then just slide that in. Like that. He says. How should we go for that again? <laughs> yeah, I will not drop it on this. Try me hardest. <laughs> there you go. Like that. There you go. Resistance was futile. There you go. Give that a turn. Once it starts biting, I'll be happy. Don't over tighten it at this stage, folks. I only want this just to hold the front end parallel and then obviously I shall come back because I've got the front front mug guard to fit and all of that lot so at the moment I just want to snug it up just to keep the forks themselves in line and then I shall come back when I put the mug guard in and uh, give it its final tightness but normally where I display my bikes up high on a shelf I tend to tighten the wheels up so they don't spin because there's nothing worse than the bike rolling off the shelf. Um, yeah, we don't want that. 
So we're just doing a bit of detail painting on the top yoke there of the uh, triple tree. Just, uh, just above where the handlebars fit. So we're going around and we're detail painting those. We should do the brake reservoirs as well as the brake levers and all of the little intricate parts of the handlebars, the buttons and all of that lot. So grab your Tamiya paints out and get ready for a bit of brush painting. And you can do all your detail work for those. At this stage it's worth doing because then you can mount it on the bike and let it all dry ready for when you come back at it and put all your fairing panels on and all of that. So I'll just have a quick move around of me stuff and then we'll get the bits and bobs out for the handlebars and get them going I reckon. Because we're not far off of wrapping this episode up for the day so kind of want to get the front end on just so that we can see the bike beginning to take shape and then that will give me time then because I've got all the body panels drying off that will give us time then to come back and uh, the clear coat would have gone off on the body panels and we can start final assembly So yeah, been a really, really enjoyable little series, this I must admit. So we've got the handlebars there. And we can start adding all the little bits and bobs to them. And assembling this unit and getting that ready to go on the bike. And again, any little bits of detail that you need to come back and touch up, it's very easy to do at this stage. And it normally happens to me, a bit of glue will get on something and you need to come back with the airy stick just to touch up a tiny piece. Don't worry. Don't stress over it. If you do get a fingerprint or any glue spills, don't be tempted to wipe it off straight away. Just let it go off, then come back at it. If you need to repaint, you can repaint it. It's not a problem. We all have happy little accidents on our builds, folks. So we'll just pop that in place, like so. There. Yeah, so want to do brum brum noises. <laughs> so I might as well do the other side. Same process as before, just glue the bits in place. I got lugs on these so the angle of the handlebars as soon as the lugs engaged will be in the correct place you haven't got to worry about that you can see the shape there so like I say just glue your piece on it'll fit you can only fit one way and that will then give you the rake of the handlebars that you're after so yeah like that and that glues up underneath there, like so. Have you a bit of him? Brumbity brum brum. Yeah, I know. Just give that a little press, let the glue do its thing. Like that. Try not to stick it to your thumb hole. And then that is going to be ready to have clutch and the brake lever and the throttle and that on there might as well might as well go for it and I so let's get them off the sprues get them on it's really going to take start taking shape then so look dab of glue there get the caps on like so Quite a fiddly little stage with the handlebars, but bear with it, folks. Take your time. It'll come good. Just like I say, 
take this stage really really slowly folks so that you can see what you're doing there's no hurry and your bike will then start taking its taking its shape like that have you some of that yeah really am pleased with this beautiful lovely hopefully the guys when i drop this up there they'll they'll appreciate it because yeah it's a nice bike in it look at it <laughs> yeah and again these these builds are all in a cabinet underneath the counter at e models folks next time you're in the shop have a look underneath the counter and you'll see builds from all of us builders up there so yeah make sure you take a selfie of uh, yourself in front of fox's eagle transporter and email it or put it on the boom up because he's really missing that build and we like mocking him <laughs> so we might as well put all these levers and grips on folks get them on and then it's going to be attaching the front end i know brilliant isn't it So we'll put a little bit of extra fin on the uh, handlebars there and these will just drop straight in then I just want to check and make sure that that's uh, all going to line up first denub that quick little bit of paint on the lever sorry I'm off shot folks I just wanted to make sure whilst I can see it because I've got a big magnifier off to me left so that I can quickly hold a part under it and check it. So a little bit of a nub there where it's come off the spruce. We just want to sort that out. And then I can fix that to the handlebars so that it looks rather, rather nice. So a quick dab of black on the end of that. And then that will be ready to come back and add to the kit like so this is where i start talking to myself folks <laughs> yeah. don't be like fester just check make sure that everything's right like that see and it was just that little brake guard just had a tiny little nub on it and i wasn't happy with it and just wanted to make sure it was in the right spot and I'll use my magnifier again just to twist the uh, lever in place because it's like a semicircle shape and when, when you put it on the end of the spike like so and then just turn it and as it engages it just drops straight in place then like that look at that whoa and that so we're getting quite near uh, to the end stage of this. So I'll start my wrap up by saying massive, massive thanks to all of you for watching. Again, a big thank you to all of you that have taken the time to get in touch and have given me lovely feedback. It means a lot. Again, if you want to grab one of these kits, head over to the guys at eModels, eModels.co.uk. Grab one of these and put it in your basket. And you can build along to me with the previous episodes. And I look forward to seeing your work. So by all means, you can put photos up in the eModels Facebook page. You can also put it up in my group page. Uh, so yeah, I look forward to seeing it. If you'd like to help support me, you can uh, subscribe to my channel. Details are in the description for that so we might as well put the front end up straight in there and there's a long screw that then will go through the top yoke of the handlebars and hold that in place and you can put a dab of glue on the top of the forks there as well just so that the uh, handlebars don't pop off but I might be lifting these off and on at the moment to do all the pipes so at this moment in time 
I'll just see how they locate like so and then I'll drop the screw in we'll see we'll see what we think but I might have to pop them off at some point to to reach any of the cables so we'll have a look for the screw and get that in place and then again don't over tighten it just snug it up folks and there is a cover that goes on this later on but I'm not going to put it on at this stage just in case they need to come back off again but look at that oh brum 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 you know I want to uh, yeah absolutely well happy with that folks hopefully you you can see that's beginning to take shape and uh, nice bit of subtle exhaust blue in there bit of discoloration so I think we'll wrap it up there for today and I look forward to seeing you for the next episode folks Thank you.